Okay, so today we're going to be looking at project 125. It's a trap. Um, I have both Inkling open as well as the document that you will be submitting. This is located in Canvas for you guys, um, just under project 125 under section 12. Um, so today, pretty much the goal of what we're looking at is to go over everything that we've looked at so far in this section 12. Um, whether it be firewalls and malware, file management, process management, and securing your browser. And now we're going to implement it in an actual problem. So here in the inkling of 125, um, you're actually presented with a mini cyber case. So one has come to your attention. A friend has come to you after inheriting her sister's computer. After using it for just a day, she's already lost some data and suspects that there may be security problems with the computer itself. She feels that if... Um, she does any more work on the computer, it will be walking into a trap. To help her out, you can use your cybersecurity skills that you've learned in this section um, in order to figure out what's going on with her computer. So you're going to work in partners for this. In your document here, you can actually put the name of your partner here. Um, both of you will have to fill out this document. So just because you're working in partners doesn't mean you can just submit one. You're both going to have to submit your own. Um, I understand that your answers are going to be similar because you are working in a group. That is fine. So you can put your partner's name here. I've also attached the grading rubric as well as the ports and protocols document here. Um, these are included in your inkling up at the top, but this is just more ease of access so you can see how you're going to be graded. And then it also gives you just some insight on some ports and protocols that you may have to use in order to look at this problem. So in the project itself, um, it actually already defines a plan of action for you, so you don't have to make one up, so you can use the plan of action provided. Um, so what they have so far is you're going to review and secure your firewall rules to create greater security, investigate and remove any suspicious files, investigate and remove downloaded files, um, recover lost or deleted user files because she said she was losing some data, and then identify and kill suspicious processes and delete executable files. So looking at this plan of action, it actually goes over everything that we've already looked at in this lesson. So the review and secure firewall rules and to create greater security, this was all in our firewalls and malware section. So this is actually looking at how to protect your system by setting up different rules and exceptions in your local firewall. So you can use this activity 121 that you've already completed as kind of a guide if you need to reference it. Same with the suspicious files. Um, looking under file management, we've done everything at looking at how you can actually spot a suspicious file. Um, in this, something key to remember is remember the file extensions and remember what people can actually do to those file extensions. So again, if you have um, questions on this or you're trying to figure out a way to actually approach this piece, look at your activity 122. Um, on the file management and some stuff that we did in there and that will kind of give you a boost in the right direction. Looking at C, investigating and removing downloaded files. So this, um, you can also look under this file management section in where files actually go once you delete them um, and where you can put files once you delete them. Are they actually gone from your system? Do you need to do something else to remove them? Um, so refer to this file management section for both um, B and C here. You can also then for D and E, you can look in that section, but you can also look in one, two, three, the process management. Um, so if there's things running that shouldn't be, if executable files are running that shouldn't be, this is what we've already actually looked at and how to manage those processes, how to remove those processes, and just stop them all together. So you're definitely going to want to look in this one, two, three in order to figure out how to stop those processes. Um, securing your browser, this will be a piece that you may look in, you may not. It depends on what issues you find with this computer. So looking at your submission document here, um, we looked at firewall rules, suspicious files, downloaded files, lost, um, deleted user files, and sp suspicious processes. Um, so these are just some questions to kind of try to navigate you in the right direction. So how can you identify them? Um, how will you disable Windows file sharing? How will you know where to look for files downloaded from the internet? Where will you find your friend's deleted files? And how will you determine suspicious processes that will, um, and what you will do with them? 
So these are just some kind of prompts to push you in the right direction to figure out what's actually going on with this system. Um, this is something you're going to run into a lot in industry. If you work help desk, if you work um, any kind of security department, someone's going to bring in their laptop and say, hey, either this is popping up, this is happening, I don't really know what's going on, I didn't click on anything. Nobody ever clicks on anything, right? So you always have to figure out, okay, what do I think they did in order to get this problem? And you kind of have to backtrace into the system to almost recreate what you think they did in order to figure out what's actually going on. So that's when you're actually going to go down to this section here in documenting and fixing the problem. So in this section, I have both a piece for the problem and a piece for steps to fix the problem. So when you find one, you can actually just take a screenshot, and put it in the steps to fix, um, and then put a little explanation in there on how you actually approached fixing this problem. So you should have about five to 10 problems to fix in your system. Um, they can range from small to the system's been taken over by a file hacker. So it could be anything that you detect could be a potential problem in this system. That's why there's the range of five to 10. Some may have more, some may have less, but you should have at least five problems. Um, if you're at the point where you're only finding like one or two problems, refer back to these sections here. So we have one, two, three, four, five pieces in our plan of action. Most likely every piece in this plan of action is going to be addressed at some point. Just a guess. So look at the plan of action itself for if you're kind of lost on what kind of problems are happening here. Um, in looking at this as well, there are some reflection questions at the end of it. This is more just to see how you and your partner worked together. So this will be independent as well. Um, these responses you don't have to share with your teammate because I just want to hear how you and your teammate actually work together and how you think it went. Um, so what's something that each team member actually contributed? Um, how did the diverse composition of your team help with problem solving? So you guys don't both have the same brain. How did actually working with someone else, maybe it's someone you haven't worked with before, maybe it's someone you have, um, but how did working with them actually help the problem solving process here? And then describe a moment um, when your teamwork was either worked well together or you could improve on your collaboration. There's always going to be one thing that you did really well and one thing that you were like, eh, we could probably work a little bit better on that. So give me at least one thing. Tell me what was going on here. Um, because these are key factors that we're going to actually discuss when we get into bigger problems. Because as we get into bigger cyber issues through this course, um, we're going to find that we're going to have to work in larger teams. And when we do, we really need to open up that communication in saying, okay, this worked, this didn't, maybe let's try this, and then move forward from it. So this piece here is going to be very helpful when we actually move forward in working in bigger teams. So for this case, um, you're essentially just, you have a computer and you're trying to figure out what's wrong with it. Biggest piece here is actually documentation. So you want to document everything you find that could be wrong and make sure that you describe what is actually going on there. Um, so this is a team project. You can work with a partner, but like I said, you both have to have one of these documents filled out and turned in. Um, in creating this here, your final, final, final piece to this is you are going to actually present what you found. So if you scroll down on here in your inkling, so you're going to create some kind of artifact that describes your approach into securing this system. So it could be a little video, it could be a PowerPoint, it could just be an image of a collage of what you did. Um, but you're going to describe to the class, okay, in approaching this problem, this is where we started. When we started here, then we moved on to this step, this step, this step. So you're just going to kind of walk us through what you guys were thinking when you approach this. Um, so you can use different collaboration tools. I know some of you like using Prezi when you do this. You do not have to make a presentation. Just something to have up while you're talking about the process that you took in order to solve this problem. Like I said, it could be a collage. It could be um, a little video. 
It could be just some bullet points that you want to walk through with pictures. That's fine. As long as when you're presenting, you have something to feed off of and something to actually show us. Like, okay, I understand what they were thinking. That makes sense. Um, so this is the last piece, and we actually are going to present this at the end of the day. Um, so what you can do is this piece you do not have to submit right away. It's going to be graded via your presentation. So the only piece you do have to submit to me on Canvas is this document here. Like I said, both of you submit it, and then you can work on your presentation as a whole. Um, if you have any questions, I will be available during class to answer them. Um, but you're welcome to get started.